In the 1970s by uh, a group of conservatives up in D.C., Paul Weyrich, uh, Henry Hyde, who was in the legislature from, or who was a, a representative from Illinois, and uh, an, a, a, a rather large group of conservatives. And they decided uh, that they would form this association to try to really impact and take over state legislatures. And they do that by pres in, in one manner, by pres writing kind of um, stock legislation that they can hand out to Missouri or Florida or whatever, and then having legislators there in those states actually try to get those bills passed? Right. Uh, they write model bills, uh, boilerplate, and they hand it out, and in some cases it's changed a little. In some cases it comes across just exactly the way it's written. As a matter of fact, um, I just found out today that uh, one of our local representatives, Rachel Bergen, actually presented a, a corporate tax bill last fall into the Florida legislature and left the opening paragraph from ALEC with their mission statement in the bill. And she recognized it and pulled it within 24 hours and resubmitted the bill without ALEC's uh, endorsement at the top. Um, but that that's how blatantly they've, uh, they've started operating since the, uh, we have so many more Republican governors and Republican legislators. Uh, there are some Democratic ALEC members, but not so many. Um, ALEC is made up of uh, right-wing right -wing foundations and uh, corporations like Walmart, Verizon, AT&T, Pfizer, uh, you can uh, go to a website, uh, and then state legislators who pay a lot less money to join because they're the ones that are, you know, they, these corporations pay money to get access. Um, and then, in turn, it looks like the legislators promote this legislation and pass it to, to the benefit of the donors to ALEC. And the bill you were just talking about from Representative Rachel Bergen on the Common Cause website, which is commonblog.com, this is what it actually said was in the text of the bill that, that this representative introduced to the Florida legislature. It says, whereas it is the mission of the American Legislative Exchange Council to advance Jeffersonian principles of free markets, limited government, federalism, and individual liberty, and, and then it goes on, and presumably at that point it would get to, the, to what the bill was about, but as he said, Representative Bergen just had left this part in that was part of the boilerplate, the stock um, model legislation that they had provided to legislators. 813-238-800, I'm sorry, here's the number again, 813-239-9663. You can also email us at dj at wmnf.org if you'd like to join the conversation. Uh, I do want to say that uh, there's a new website that just came online about uh, six or eight months ago called Alec Exposed, and this website uh, was started by the Center for Media and Democracy. They've pulled together a lot of investigative work that's been done on Alec. There were a lot of people, I think there were some whistleblowers that um, came forth with information about what was going on, because even though they've been around for 30, 40 years, it was only uh, in the last year or so that I think I started to hear more and more about Alec, and I know that some of the more progressive uh, r reporters and broadcasters on, you know, like the cable channels are starting to do stories on it. So it, it is getting into the mainstream discussion, but uh, for the influence they have, we're not hearing nearly enough about it. And you mentioned the website Alec Exposed, and I should tell our listeners that Alec is spelled A-L-E-C because it stands for the American Legislative Exchange Council. We're going to go to your phone calls in just a second, 813-239-9663. You can also email us at dj at wmnf.org. But I wanted to ask our guest Susan Smith, who is the president of the Democratic Progressive Caucus of Florida. Give us some other examples of connections between ALEC and bills that we might see in the Florida legislature. Well, the prison privatization bill that was coming on the floor today, I'm not sure if they had that vote. Uh, that is an ALEC bill. Uh, you'll know because these bills are being introduced in a number of states. Uh, that's why in the last couple of years we've seen the same uh, legislation in Wisconsin, in Indiana, in Pennsylvania. Uh, in the states that do have 
primarily uh, overwhelming numbers in, of conservatives serving in their legislatures and governors also. Um, so we, the pris prison privatization and I think also the voter suppression bills we've seen, it, it came in a little different form in Florida because we already have voter ID laws here. Um, so in Florida, we had the hearing here last week with Senator Nelson and Senator Durbin. Um, I know WMNF covered that, um, talking about the the efforts to keep down minority and student votes. So the the people who tend to vote more progressively are being shut out at the polls. And you can hear our coverage of that uh, of that hearing at wmnf.org/news. And also, Susan, you mentioned the prison privatization bill. You talked about that. Well, there was big news today where Senate President Mike Paradopoulos announced today that he was stripping Senator Mike Fasano of his chairmanship of the Senate Budget Committee that oversees spending on prisons and the courts. And the Republican from Newport Ritchie is also being removed from the main Budget Committee. And this is because Senator Fasano is really challenging that prison privatization uh, component of, of in the Florida legislature. And so that's just a, a connection between that ALEC bill, that ALEC inspired bill perhaps, and something that's actually happening today in Florida. Uh, the, the reason that I'm, I think I'm here today is more the education focus. Mm -hmm. um, and what they're trying to do is systematically defund um, our public institutions. The prison system is a public, should be a public fund function. Our public schools should be uh, something we all support and that we all value. I know that in our caucus we value public schools because we, we think that that's one of the reasons we have a strong country and a strong democracy is because we have an educated populace. Uh, but what they're doing is systematically defunding the school system through vouchers, through charters, through high stakes testing. Um, and you look and these corporations who are pushing this ALEC legislation are the ones who are benefiting from the privatization. The prison, um, the, I'm not sure the for-profit prison, uh, prison companies that are going to be running, that they're trying to steer business to. Uh, but you can see at the charter management companies, you know, I've gotten into arguments with people and they say, oh, well, charter schools are public schools. Well, the charter schools might have the name public school on them, but m many of them, if not most of them, are now managed by for-profit charter companies. So they sign these contracts, they sign leases, and the public school system has to pay this, our public money into these private for-profit corporations. Um, and the vouchers are being expanded and that money, that funnels more money into private corporations. The big bill that's coming before the legislature this session is the parent trigger bill. It's actually called the parent empowerment bill, which is a very, um, most of your of the listeners here at WMNF, I'm sure, are familiar with uh, with Frank Luntz and Carl Rove and, and the way they uh, twisted language. Well, it's called parent empowerment, and what it does, it says that if a school has failed, I'm not sure exactly how the Florida law works, but Alec, if you go to Alec Exposed, you can look up parent trigger bills and you'll see the exact language. If a school has been deemed failing for, you know, based on these tests that companies are making money from, if it's been deemed failing for three or more years, the parents in that school can vote to turn the school over to a private corporation, or they can vote to fire the principal. So it's taking the power away from the school board, and the elected school board in a lot of cases, and putting the power into the hands of private corporations. The number to call is 813-239-9663 or dj at wmnf.org. And we want to go to the phone line right now, Zebulon in Tampa. Hi, Zebulon. What's your question or comment?
I don't know about that particular bill, but if you go to Alec Exposed, they have a, a pretty good search feature. Um, and down on the left side of the page, they have all the different uh, topics. So you can probably look up wage theft. Uh, just to check before I left home, I, I looked up parent trigger bill and, and all the information I needed came up. And they, they do a great job. Uh, they have a good wiki on there that, that will take the legislation and show you the exact language of the bill and talk to, and show you you know, who's had impact on it, who's influenced it. So it's a good website to check out. Mm -hmm. All right, thank, thank you so much for that call, Zebulon. The number is 813-239-9663. My guest is Susan Smith. She's president of the Democratic Progressive Caucus of Florida. You can also email us at dj at wmnf.org. It's 543 in the afternoon. My name is Sean Canan, and you're listening to our call-in show, The Last Call. And the reason, one of the reasons we're talking about ALEC this week is because ALEC is holding an Education Reform Academy in the Jacksonville area beginning on Friday. Can you tell our listeners who might be there and why your group is calling the meeting a democracy killer? Well, we think that when you don't allow the representatives to really represent the people, when they're representing the corporate interests and allowing those corporate interests to actually write your legislation, that's not democracy. That's not what we think our country stands for. Uh, we pride ourselves in Florida on having some of the strongest sunshine laws of any state in, in the country, yet our legislators don't seem to think that they're accountable uh, in the same way that other branches of government are. So ALEC is having this academy. They recently re released their grade card for, for education reform in the country. If you go to their website, you can see that. And Florida got a B plus. Hooray for us. It's not based on you know, how well the students are doing, it's based on how well the states are doing at implementing the reform that ALEC wants them to, re to, to implement. So I guess they're meeting in, uh, at the Ritz-Carlton in Amelia Island, Florida, with uh, legislators from around the country and corporate billionaires, I, I have no idea, lobbyists for all these different corporations. Uh, it's hard to get information. There's nothing out there. It's a private event. Um, we don't know if, if the public is allowed to get into it. We don't think any press has been invited into it. Uh, we are in the process of calling uh, the state legislators to find out if anybody plans to attend from Florida. Uh, we've gotten feedback that a couple might be attending, depending on the schedule of the of the House and Senate. Um, anyway, they're pretty uh, they are pretty blatant about the fact that they pay for this. They're paying. They're putting up legislators at the Ritz Carlton. They're paying their travel expenses. Uh, all of that could violate the gift ban, but we have uh, ethics laws with not much teeth. Uh, ALEC had a big conference in Louisiana last summer in August and Representative Scott Randolph from Orlando tried to find out through the Speaker's office uh, if he tried to get a ruling on the how it was paid for and uh, they seem to have a way of getting around the ethics laws so that they can take the, you know, take the money and, and take these junkets, these uh, pretty lavish junkets. And you said that it was on the calendar for at least one legislator, but uh, they weren't really very open when you tried to contact everyone about whether they would be going or not. Well, I think Alec had bad planning for the Florida legislature because we are in session, and they weren't, probably when this was scheduled, they didn't realize that uh, our legislators would be pretty tied up. Uh, so the the House, I think, is scheduled to go till 6 o'clock on Friday, and the, the, the conference is Friday and Saturday at Amelia Island, so they weren't sure. Uh, there, were, there were, I know it was on one senator's calendar that I spoke with her, her staff today. Well, let's go back to the phone lines. Hi, John in Tampa. You're on the air. What's your question or comment? So what kind of examples are you talking about, John?
All right. Well, thanks for that comment. Do you do you want to respond? Um, I don't think uh, President Obama has uh, issued nearly as many executive orders as, as previous presidents. And uh, when you've got a Congress that won't do anything, like we have, um, sometimes that's the only way to get things done. All right. Thank you very much for calling in, John from Tampa. Let's go now to Roland. Hi, Roland. You're on the air. Uh, well, a lot of that has to do with the redistricting that's going on right now. It's in the courts. When you have uh, gerrymandering, which uh, the Democrats were guilty when they were in charge and the Republicans have now been in charge for, I think, 16, 17 years in Tallahassee, uh, they draw the districts to their own advantage and then there really is no accountability in Tallahassee. So uh, you get uh, parties if they're not in power, they really can't be strong. And I think that's one of the things that's happened with the Democratic Party. The voters saw fit in 2010 to take what little bit of power the Democrats had to stop the worst of the worst in, ta worst in Tallahassee away because we lost our, uh, our uh, enough members of the Senate. We had a firewall there with the Senate um, because they didn't have a supermajority. But when the other side has a supermajority, you're just pretty powerless to, to do anything. But I would urge everybody sign up to vote by mail. Uh, get your vote in early. Do your homework and know who supports the issues that are important to you. And don't vote for the people who let corporate interests like ALEC uh, control the agenda the, and, and give you such an extreme agenda and take away your democracy. Another factor with why the Democrats used to be have more power in Tallahassee than they do now is kind of the swing with the what are called Republican Democrats, I'm, I'm sorry, um, Reagan, Republic, Reagan Republicans who were Democrats, maybe Southern strategy type Democrats in the South in the 60s and 70s who are now considering themselves Republicans even though maybe their philosophy hasn't changed much. But of course there's been lots of Democratic sh demographics shifts in Florida over the last decades too. So thanks so much for that call, Roland. Let's go now to Ken in Bradenton. Hi Ken, you're on the air. I think one thing we can do is tell people about it. Uh, as I said, the word, the word ALEC, the organization, has been so uh, under the radar that they've been able to do all this. So the best thing you can do is, you know, scream it from the rooftops and tell all your friends that it's out there, uh, because people just aren't aware. People have not paid attention, and when you don't pay attention, this is what happens. Uh, the collective bargaining rights, you were talking about the, the reason people vote against their own interests, and I don't like that term because that makes us sound like we don't care about other people's interests, and I think we should. Uh, I think that we've got to start thinking of community again and what's good for, for our country, what's good for our state, and what, what will build us and move us forward. And um, we have not had leadership that has done that for us. 
Uh, we're, I just got back from a trip to uh, that European socialist country of France and you know my husband and I hopped on public transportation for one euro. We were able to go all along the southern coast of France for a euro. Now we don't have anything like that. Uh, you could travel on trams in the city. Uh, you, I don't know, you realize when you go outside this country how much ground we've lost over the last 20 or 30 years. And it's because of these corporate interests who are in control, they are benefiting their, themselves and not the people. So um, we've got to protect our unions. Our unions are one of the last lines of defense we have in this country. Um, so, you know, we've uh, joined the Democratic Progressive Caucus of Florida, and we'll tell you how you can do it. Our guest is Susan Smith. She's president of the Democratic Progressive Caucus of Florida. And Susan, we have an email. Uh, Gary wants to know, can you discuss Jeb Bush's involvement in the privatization of education in Florida, and in particular the conference that was held in California last summer in the session that was titled, Never Let a Crisis Go to Waste, which was attended by our current president of the Senate, Don Gates. Well, it sounds like the title of a Naomi Klein book, um, <laughs> right? So. Uh, absolutely. I can't believe this much time's passed and I haven't mentioned Jeb Bush. Uh, Jeb Bush is seen as this.